So, Steve, you, you've been on top of that box leading pit crews. How does this mistake happen? Well, very simply, it is a mistake by a number of people. It's more than one. You know, the tire guy is responsible for the tire, setting the air pressure, putting it in the location. The tire carrier, when he leaves pit wall, he has to understand he's setting the correct tire in the, in the correct location. Um, it's been kind of reported, and I understand this, that they had the tires behind the pit box in the shade, which I would have done as a crew chief as well. You know what? Two tires in the shade, two tires in the sun can really mess up your setups. So moving it from behind the pit box to the front, they got put in the wrong location. And you mentioned it. It's just an error that it's a human error, but if you want to be a champion, it's an error you cannot make. I was gutted for Cole Pern because he, as the crew chief, is responsible, and I'm not waiving his responsibility. But this is the type of error that over the three days I was in Miami worrying about everything I had to worry about on this 19 car, never would the tires being on the wrong corner even come to mind. And it's more than just that. It's the time they put them behind. But then because they had a right front tire in the wrong location, the less air pressure and the smaller size DJ, then it goes and drags the right front splitter off and the car's tight for the rest of the night. So I mean, that was the moment. They, the championship wasn't a guaranteed loss. But in looking back on it, that was the moment that the championship was lost. Yeah, and, and you know, we talk all the time. Uh, these cars are made of parts and pieces, and sometimes they fail, uh, and, and you don't know why. Uh, sometimes you do find out why. Uh, the other side of it is uh, that those parts and pieces are put there by human beings, and then the pit stops are obviously done uh, by people that are very good at their job, but you still make mistakes, and I think pressure brings that too. And, and just as you were talking about there, having those tires in a different place than they normally would, uh, just so that they were making sure that, you know, so a couple of the tires, if, you're, if they're in the sun, they're obviously uh, getting heated up there. You, it could change the air pressure. You can't say, you know, you gotta be doing all kinds of things. So it's unfortunate. That's the downside of sports and competition is that when someone makes a mistake like this, then it's put on them and, and they have to live with that. But we've all been in that situation where we made a mistake we wish we wouldn't have made. But there are no guarantees. You know, what Kyle Busch could have done uh, might have been enough anyway uh, as that night went on. I think he and his team were really prepared for what that racetrack was going to do later on. Well, so that was the error. They got the 19 damaged and behind, but then they had recovered. They were all the way up in the mix, about four seconds behind the 18. Uh, and you saw a little indecision on the radio, pit with the 18, and then decided to stay out. I didn't like the strategy. I think that the 19 needed to pit with the 18, but that's a personal opinion. Um, in the end, he was four seconds behind. Obviously, Cole Pern says, I don't think we can just pit and make up four seconds on the racetrack. So he pits five laps later in what would seem to be the optimum time. I use optimum as an engineering type term, that you're gonna have the correct amount of time on each set of tires to run the 18 down. In the end, Cole had to do something. I didn't understand the strategy. I actually had a conversation with him today. I appreciate Cole the day after a championship explaining what he was thinking there. And he, he said, he goes, listen, my only thought was I had to find four seconds on the racetrack following the 18 down. I didn't think I was going to make it up. We hadn't seen how we were going to make it up with the damage to the splitter. So his hope was, and it was a calculated hope, Kyle Busch was going to have to run longer on that last set of tires than any race car had yet in that race. And we have both seen it, and you have driven it, where you get to the end of the life cycle on a tire at Atlanta or Miami, and it drives awful, and you nosedive. Unfortunately for the 19, it didn't happen, but there was at least a calculated chance, right? It wasn't a haymaker. He just didn't throw a Hail Mary. He said, all right, this is it. Of all the chips in front of me, this is the chip I'm going to take. But like I said, I'll go all the way back. No damage to the splitter from the tires being on wrong. I don't think Cole is forced to make that call. I think yeah. he chases the 18 down pit road and tries to beat him on the racetrack. We had this conversation earlier today, and, and uh, somebody compared this to, you know, Chris Weber calling timeout in the Final Four, right, when they had no timeouts left. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fair. I, 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 I hate it for the people involved because I, and I know you have and you have as well, we've all been in these situations where we have been in that moment where it's winning time and we didn't deliver. And you feel absolutely horrible. You feel like you let everybody down, your fans, your colleagues at work, your sponsors, everybody involved. You feel absolutely horrible. And I feel bad for these guys that they are going to wake, you know, when they went to try to go to sleep last night, that was on their shoulders. But this professional sports. Yeah. And, and it's part of it. And it's, not, I mean, it's just a mistake you can't make with that much on the line or at any time for that matter. Yeah. And we talk about how many championships Kyle Busch thinks he might have had, you could be looking at Truex with three in a row, possibly. Yes. I mean, they have put themselves right there in position to win the last three titles, but uh, because of different things, uh, they don't have that. But they put that effort there. So, and once again, though, 
the first car to qualify in was the 19, and he was the fastest car in Miami. Yeah. So when we get a year from now and we start talking about trying to make the playoffs, don't discount the advantage that Cole Pern had with that race team. It showed yeah. up. I mean, that first stage, he lapped. If there wouldn't have been stage breaks, <laughs> whew, I mean, he would have lapped everyone. Yeah, he he, it was unbelievable. Yeah.